suffering and unconsciousness. There is a direct relation between the two. From the beginning, man is conditioned and things have been imposed by the society, parents and schools and colleges. You have to live in a particular way. All this creates layers of unconsciousness and that with the passage of time, these goes deeper and deeper into you. Then you begin to act according to that. This is a kind of hypnosis. I had told you the story of Kurchiv. He was talking about a magician who had sheep. And every day sheep used to go in the wild and disappear and he has to go and look for them. Then he hypnotized the sheep and since then there was no problem. There are two types of people who like to exploit and the others who wants to be exploited. Both cause misery and suffering. Neither the ones who are exploiter can understand that, can understand that this is emerging out of their unconsciousness and be aware of it. Nor those who has to suffer or is being exploited can understand and accept it. Acceptance is the first criteria in anything that whatever problems are around me is because of me, not because of anyone else. The moment you start thinking about, you start looking at the entire phenomenon like that, the doors open. Then whatever is happening, you realize that it is outcome of your own doings. Hindu scriptures speak of this in many examples. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna tried to convince Bhish and Karan, the two characters, to come on the path of truth. But they had their own mind. For them, something else was more important. They could not be convinced to change their ways and means. And this led to their destruction. No matter what you try to convince these people, unless time comes, it does not happen. If you start accepting that whatever is happening around you, your financial status, your problems of whatever nature, is the outcome of the thick layers of unconsciousness that you have allowed to remain within you. You have to face that and you continue to blame the others. First thing, you have to remember that you have to stop blaming the others and accept that all that is happening is because of your own doing. Then, as the things surface from the unconscious mind to the conscious, you accept it and the door begins to open. Unconscious mind, the, your conscious mind has to be made aware that whatever problems are arising is coming from deep within. The other becomes simply a cause. It is just he is playing a part. The content of unconscious mind are repressed by the conscious mind. To reverse the process, they have to be brought back to the conscious mind with total acceptance. And the conscious mind has to express these with awareness instead of suppressing them. When you repress all these things, then they go into unconscious and unless the reverse process of expression is there, 
they will remain and the layers will get thicker and thicker day by day. Conscious mind does not know anything about it. For conscious mind, they are still repressed. It is only through conscious mind that they have a way to go out of your being. When you are going into your day-to-day -day life, you act out of conscious mind. A simple example, you are driving on the road, someone gives you a bad drive. That bad drive is a circumstance or situation to trigger off something from the unconscious mind. A door opens. A door opens. Something from the unconscious mind wants to surface. Instead of realizing that this is your own unconscious layer which is coming onto the surface and you have to express it consciously, then instead of that, instead of you act in a different way, putting the blame onto the other, whatever others do, I am not responsible for it. You are not responsible for it. But how do you respond to that particular circumstance and situation is your being. From unconscious mind, there is no direct door to come into the light. A contact can be made, but there is no way for any content to go out of the unconscious mind directly. You did not know what is lying in the unconscious layer. That particular circumstance and situation has triggered something from the unconscious mind to come onto the surface. And you say things which are not necessary. They create even deeper layers of unconsciousness in you. A contact can be made but there is no way for any content to come out of the unconscious mind directly. Had that circumstance and situation not come, you would not know what is there in the unconscious mind. Now the door is open. You can close the door out of ignorance and continue to suffer, create more leaves, or you can go out. I gave you an example in study. What others do has nothing to do with it. You prepare a dish, somebody does not want to taste even. Why are you getting upset about it? If someone does not want to taste, it is their doing. You can use this opportunity to go beyond a certain layer of unconsciousness you suffer because you continue to entertain and live out of your conditionings which has become a part of your unconscious. Whatever is there in the unconscious, first it has come to the conscious mind. Conscious mind is like the main gate. You have entered the main gate. If you want to go out, you have to go to the main gate, otherwise you will remain confined. Deeper you go into the unconscious mind, the walls become thicker. The collective unconscious mind has even a thicker layer. Then cosmic unconscious mind is almost unapproachable. It is different even for the experts. For the first time when the unconscious contents are released through the conscious mind and they are being brought to the notice of the conscious mind, not only the notice but recognition, acceptance and expression, it requires tremendous understanding. If you say to someone, you 
want to marry your mother, the conscious mind will simply deny it. It is all nonsense, what are you saying? I have never thought about it. And he is right. He has never thought about it. But his mother was his first woman in his life. And he loved her and he got her love. And he has been jealous of his father's since then. That is why every society has made it a discipline to respect your father. That is just to prevent the natural tendency of being jealous and disrespectful. We leave things incomplete. We never try to allow these things to attain fruition. And unless and until something attains fruition, it remains there and it becomes part of your unconscious. The moment a problem arises, you want to leave that situation. You have entered into a relationship with a person. Problems begin to crop up. In acrimony, you abandon that relation. The layer is created. If that relationship or that scene has to come to an end, it must dissolve with consciousness. The scene that we were supposed to perform on this stage as husband and wife has come to an end now. We have a certain part of our life gather. A simple example of this is you are hungry. You go on the dining table. Food is served in different serving dishes. You take out a certain portion from whatever dishes you like and consume your meal. If somehow or the other you leave that part, certain or certain things that will create the hunger again in you and you go on doing the same thing over and over again. When you have finished with some, finish it, finish with it so totally that no trace of this remains, that I wish I had tasted that dish that was looking so tasty. But that dish is no more. Once you have left the table, everything is removed. Now only the memory of that had remained in you. This becomes part of unconscious. This is how things go in deeper layers of your unconsciousness. Perhaps in your childhood you had a desire, but now you can understand it is meaningless and you can release it. Rather than repressing it, you can throw it out. And as the unconscious becomes empty, you enter into another layer, which is collective unconsciousness, and it starts speaking to you. Collective unconscious starts speaking to you only when the unconscious layer is finished. And as the collective unconscious becomes empty, then there is a possibility for cosmic unconscious to speak to you. And once the whole lower part of your mind, the depth of your mind is cleared, it is such a freshening experience. It is a freshening experience as if 24 hours a day you are taking showers. And once this lower part is unburdened, you are ready to move upward very easily. But the conscious mind is the only door for the higher, for the lower as It is only through the conscious mind you can relive those moments. Otherwise, again and again, those keep on surfacing in many forms. It comes in the dreams. Any circumstance and situation comes, you are reminded of that. And you go on 
remembering that, but you do not know how to relieve that. And unless and until that happens, your misery will continue to be there. Conscious mind is the only door for the higher and so anything that is going to happen has to happen through the conscious mind and for and for that acceptance is the only way you accept it as it is and the moment you accept it the many doors begin to open first you cannot remember all your dream, all the layers of unconsciousness that are there in you. So circumstance and situation has to be created. Sometimes these happen naturally. And in psychoanalysis, the psychoanalyst takes you into those dreams. But when you dream, is a totally different kind of language. Something may appear in dream, may come once and may not come again because there are so many dreams. So the person's conscious mind is never convinced that this dream content has any reality or has anything to do with his unconscious layers. Dream has a different language. It is not the language of the conscious mind. Dreams happen in pictures. It is pictorial. It is not alphabetical. That is one of the greatest trouble. And because of it, psychoanalysis has to disappear. It cannot continue. So the whole thing depends on the psychoanalysis interpretation. You can tell him the dream, but the dream says nothing unless he interprets it. Now that interpretation may be his personal prejudice. That is how if you go to any psychoanalyst, whether he belongs to the group of Sigmund Freud or anyone else, you have to understand if you go to Sigmund Freud, everything comes to sex. Whatever you dream, you cannot dream anything which you will not conclude is sexual repression. You can take the dream to Carl Gustav Jung and it will come out of your collective unconsciousness, a myth, a mythology from your past lives. Take the same dream to elder and it will be interpreted as nothing but ambition will to power. So if there are thousands of interpretations, there will be thousands of meaning to your dreams. But hypnosis is totally different. It is not a pictorial language that the unconscious uses. Instead it uses the same language as the conscious mind because it is talking to a person's conscious mind. If you are listening to me, and your conscious mind becomes silent because when I am speaking to you, the energy field also flows. If you are listening and your conscious mind becomes silent, the unconscious mind starts releasing its vapors. No language is needed, neither of me nor the ordinary language. It is just a repressed energy that starts coming to the conscious mind and is released through the conscious layer, even without your will. Just that presence. Once we have cleaned the lower mind, then we can easily move to the upper realm. But for that too, one has to go through the conscious mind. And the upper wing does not have anything. Nothing is repressed there. So there is no question of psychoanalysis ever discovering it or any other school of psychology ever discovering it. Because it has no dreams, no relations, it is just purity. 
All that is needed is clearing the lower mind. Just a method of meditation will give you the wings to move upward. There is no barrier. You get more and more into light and as you move more and more into the light, many things that are stored in the subconscious mind begins to dissolve. It is like a dark room which has never been lighted. The bulb is missing from there. Switch is not working. All you have done to fix the switch, put on a bulb and turn it on. With that, you can see yourself. All that is suppressed there, all that is hiding there in open corners of the room. Some will start disappearing on their own and with a little effort you can clean these. But the light is very important. The light of awareness, the light of acceptance. Your suffering will disappear. It is not a collective process that you can remove the suffering of entire humanity. It has to be, every individual has to work on his or her own to remove the situation of misery and problems. And this can only be done by bringing light into the dark caves. Once your misery is over. Whatever you will do, wherever you will go, a light goes with you. Wherever the Master goes, light goes with it. He is light, he is awakening, he is awareness. And whosoever comes in his contact, that light is infused into his conscious mind. And he begins to, he or she begins to see things in a different light, different perspective. You will realize many of your problems, many of your unconscious moments start dissolving on their own. You do not have to ask or seek solutions for this. You realize that it is no more there. You, a light has been brought into your life, you have to expand its horizon, its immensity, its luminosity, so that from now onwards, not even a single corner of your mind remains in dark. Then your misery is over, bliss will be there, and this is an individual process. Each one of us Sufferings has to go. There is no other way. 